Hi everyone. About a year ago, I bought this, the Liowa Pro Blends. It's a cracking little lens, but there isn't much about on YouTube and places like that on how to use it in the field. Lots about using it in the studio and setups you can use. I thought I'd make this video just to share some of the faults and uh, ways I found to use this lens out in nature reserves and places like that when I'm photographing wildlife and natural history subjects. So for those who don't know, this lens is a two times macro. It is f14 at its widest, uh, but it does give this wonderful bug eye view of your subjects. And it also has another great feature. It's actually waterproof up to this point where there's a USB inlet to light your light, which I'll come to in a minute. If you look at the front here, you can see that it's got a ring of lights around the lens to help you light your subject. But there's no hiding the fact it's a bit of a niche lens and it's a bit awkward to use. It's very long, so especially when you're at high magnifications, it's very hard to keep steady, especially for video. And that f14 wireless aperture really makes it hard to get enough light on your subjects. But I'll go through some of the things that I found have helped when using this lens. Now, the version I'm using is the Canon Cine version. So it's Canon Fit and it has these wider cog-like grips on the aperture and uh, focus there. Uh, so you can use it with uh, motorized gears and stuff like that. They do not make these lenses in micro four thirds fit, which is what I shoot with on Olympus and Panasonic. So I've had to get an adapter for it. Now, if this was just a standard adapter, that would mean this lens would become a 48 mil four times macro. But these Metabones adapters have a magnification factor to them. So they call them speed boosters, so the aperture becomes f11 at its widest and the focal length turns out not to be 48 mil but it goes all the way down to 34 mil so i don't get the full frame effect of the bug eye but i still get enough of it to make it worth using so this is one of the setups i use in the field with my olympus this is what i use for stills using it in the field the first few tips i give is just try and keep it wide open as much as you can it's always a battle for the light on a sunny day you might get away with it and you're going to have to crank up the ISO as well so if you're shooting full frame you're probably laughing there because I tend to shoot at ISO 800 which I'll get away with a micro four thirds it's not too bad especially with a bit of post processing because you're going to want to shut a speed of at least 100 per second although it's only 24 mil you're you know shooting macro and the length of that barrel just amplifies any shaking especially if you're hand holding which brings me neatly on to how you keep your shot steady. So you can shoot handheld. I've taken quite a few shots handheld, usually away from the two times macro end of the focusing. So, you know, on larger subjects, it's a lot easier to do. And this still of a common data, I've taken in nice sunny conditions. So I've got a fairly decent shutter speed. And the length of the lens has let me get close enough to the insect without it flying away while still getting that nice wide angle effect. That's for stills. On video, it is a bit more tricky to do it handheld. So what you can do, you can sort of cheat. If you can get enough light, you can put your shutter speed up to, you know, 100 frames a second or more if you can. And with a bit of post processing and slowing it down, it does minimise sort of the, the jarring effect of the image shaking. So that's a, a little cheat that a lot of video users use. So this Red Admiral, you can see I've been hand holding. It's not too bad, it's quite a large subject. So the video is quite all right. But on this much smaller insect, you can see the shaking becomes a lot more noticeable. But it is better if you can support your camera in some way. Now you can use a tripod, but I do find that quite fiddly because especially if you're high above the ground, the length of the legs is gonna get in the way, especially if you're trying to get close to an insect. You know, the length of the lens does help you get closer than you would be able to with a smaller macro lens, but it does get a bit fiddly, but there are other options. So you can see here, I've rested the end of the lens on the bridge and I'm just sliding it closer and closer to the subject to get a better and better shot. And it demonstrates quite nicely how the smaller diameter of the lens and the fact the body's kept further away and you from the, and you are kept further away from the insect and you can get closer in without disturbing it. But you do have to be a bit careful here 
not to damage the end of the lens, especially if you're doing it to, on a rock or something like that. If you look up Steve Everett on YouTube, he uses little O-rings on the end of the lens to um, help protect it. And he's got some great videos of various wasps and stuff coming out of burrows he's filmed with this lens, so well worth checking out. But sometimes you need something else to keep the shot steady. And I've got a few options here. The Gorillapod, or you know, various knockoffs, are quite a nice middle ground between the tripod and you know, using a bean bag. I'll go into the tripod, by the way, in another video, I think, because it's a bit more fiddly to use. And there's a few things and ideas I've got to make that a bit better. But the Gorillapod's quite good. It's quite flexible. You can put it whatever angle you like. But I do find it does get a bit wobbly. So you set up your camera, and as you can see here, the image shakes for a little bit for a few seconds afterwards, which could ruin your shot. But the one I use the most is probably bean bags. We've got this large one here, and this can be quite good. As you can see here, you can just use it normally just to help steady the shot a bit more or raise your camera off the ground a little bit. I tend to always take this small one around with me anyway, and that can be good for getting a bit lower to the ground. And just gives you a bit more stability than having nothing. I just find that that's quite nice. And it's not as cumbersome as this big one. But I do find the double bag can get in the way. But it can also really give you some proper stable shots. And you can just let go of the camera if you're filming something like wood ants, as I'm filming here. And just let it get on with it. But I've had to pick one, it'd be a double bean bag or at least a large bean bag, large enough to hold the lens and camera in place without you having to hold on to it. Because that can be very useful if you've got a cooperative subject or something like wood ants that are walking past. Um, that can work really well. The other place I find these guys best for is when you're filming underwater. So remember, it's waterproof at the end, it's always worth trying. And although you can't always leave it by the pond and let it go, in fact, you might not want to because if it falls off it might end up very wet and very broken. I do find this the best for adding stability. This shot here I filmed with a bean bag somewhere halfway between these two actually in size and you can see it's a tiny bit shaky because I'm right at the edge of my reach because uh, it can't get the bean bag wet that's the downside. You can get waterproof ones but I don't know if they're that waterproof. Something I should test really. Maybe I should put one in a, a waterproof bag and see if that works. But I think a tripod might work best with ponds, but it's not something I've tested all that much. And one note of caution, do make sure you don't put it in the water past the USB socket because it will flood and it will kill the lights and electronics in your lens. So don't do that. A photographer friend of mine has drowned his twice. So it's a hundred or 200 quid to replace the barrel. So you can replace the barrel, it's not the end of the world, but do avoid doing that. The other big problem with this lens is getting enough light it's f14 on full frame it's still f11 even on micro four thirds with the speed booster but you can use it in sunny conditions it is okay especially at iso 800 you should have plenty of light at f14 in a nice sunny day obviously slightly harsh light but you know you can still get some nice shots and some video i've got some nice shots using natural light the long barrel length and the narrowness lets you get quite close without casting a shadow you can also do backlit shots like these wood ants, which come out quite nicely, I think. And that all works quite well as long as the conditions are all right. But if they're not, you're going to have to find another lighting option. Now, there is one built in. There's this ring of LEDs around the front of the lens. And you can use them by plugging in uh, the supply cable to a mobile phone power pack. You don't have to use a big one like this. You can use a lot of the small ones work perfectly well. That plugs in to the USB socket. And that just turns on. And as you can see, there's a nice little glow of lights there. Now this is going to be quite good for fill-in night or when it gets too dark. But I do find that that ring of lights puts a ring of dots on any reflective surface, which can be very distracting and not very nice to look at. But they are a good thing to use if you're shooting at F40 because they when you get down to two times macro and it's f40 they're so close that the brightness is more than enough light for you to use to light your subject but there is another option which is this 
the newer PT178S light panel. So it's a load of LEDs. Um, you can buy a diffuser to go on the front, which I do use sometimes, and it's powered by the, the standard Sony batteries that seem to power everything these days. Plug it in, and it's adjustable from one up to 99. It goes quite bright. It's 11 watts, and I've used this really effectively in the field with things like wood ants, a bit more cooperative. As you can see, as I filmed here, it comes out really nicely, especially when you diffuse the light. Much nicer than just using the LEDs on the end of the lens. Of course, the downside is a big panel like this with a bright light is going to spook quite a lot of creatures. So it's not a perfect solution. And it's quite fiddly. Obviously, I have to either hold both. And it's, yeah, it's really um, fiddly to use. But when you get the right subject, this is the thing I would recommend to use. So something like that. Plenty of other light panels out there you can use too. I'm sure they'll work just as well. But that is pretty much it for my tips. Um, I'm going to do a follow-up video. I've got a few other things I want to talk about. And I'll probably do it in a few months' time. I've got a few other ideas I need to try. But I thought I'd just do like a, a starter one, see if people are interested. If you are interested, please let me know. And that will encourage me to do the next one. So uh, thanks for joining me, and I hope that's useful. And if you've got any tips of your own, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. See you in the next video, guys.